In this video, I'm going to teach you about power and how you need to be powerful. One of the biggest problems that we have is many people want to get the benefits of someone who has power without having the power. It is the craziest thing. Also, an update for those of you, today is the last day that you can get your basic financial course for 125. It goes up to 250 later on today. So go below and get that. It'll be in one of the two comments. And we begin with investing yourself tomorrow. Let's start at my educational background. I don't think I've ever talked about this before, maybe a long time ago, but I used to go to private school for a short spiel. I didn't feel that I was being challenged in public school. I went out, I got a job, and I enrolled myself in Holy Family. Holy Family was one of the schools that the black elite sent their children. Holy Family, John Carroll. And the difference was remarkable. It was like night and day smaller class size, even though back then I felt that my public education is better than a lot of the public education today because there are so many kids in the classroom. I remember being in the first grade at Adamsville Elementary and I think there were 16 of us. We had Miss Nichols, she was a teacher who had a teacher's aide and there was only 16 of us. Now you have a single teacher with 32 to almost 40 kids. This is why many parents send their kids to private school. One of the reasons I'm having this conversation is there was this thing between uh, DJ Envy and Killer Mike, and I have some insights on that. I've been in Atlanta since 1988, and my ex-wife used to go to Benjamin E. Mays. I know a lot of these people. I've met them. And over the years, there's some things that have emerged. Back then, Atlanta had a huge, solid black middle class and a pretty large upper middle black middle class. And their children benefited. Over the years, I've been able to see that the kids who grew up with solid middle class parents either got to their level or went above, and the kids who grew up with rich parents got to their level or went above. And a smattering of kids who were from disadvantaged economic backgrounds, they kind of crossed over. But essentially, predominantly, the rich kids who started out rich ended up rich. Now, what does this mean about power. I'm getting to that. I was at Holy Family and I just noticed that the kids were nice. There was a uh, Jenna and Jenna Rollins. There was these two outrageously gorgeous sisters and they were really nice to me and they helped me get to where I needed to get. Um, my mother was just very uncooperative in this whole endeavor, but that may be another video. So I saw the difference and I saw the people emerge. Part of the problem with many people who want to be competitive is they want to operate from a safe environment and get the benefits that someone who doesn't operate in a safe environment will get. Like if you are going to be a business owner and then if you become successful and you didn't have a trust fund, you didn't have good parents, you had no money, you just had to struggle and then you literally change your life around. Like if you were the product of a single parent household and you went up to an income of 150, owned your own house, had money saved away, you actually transcended your class. That is very hard to do, so congratulations. One of the things I did not like what Killer Mike was saying was protect the children. Do not send your children out to these hostile environments. Going back to Birmingham, Alabama, what were they doing to young black children in Birmingham, Alabama in the 1960s? They were sicking dogs on them. They were throwing stuff at them. They had to have armed guards so these kids could go to school. And these kids went to school and they were dignified and they were proud and I am proud of them. That was hostility. If you are afraid that someone's going to talk about you or say something, that is so weak. We're teaching our kids to be weak. This is where we get into competition. I have been going to school with little white kids, little Asian kids since the first grade. And then the departure when I went to Holy Family was the first time I was in a school with nothing but black people. And to be clear, these were well-educated, affluent, and nice black people. They were not evil, they were mean, they, they, they were very welcoming. So it was a nice experience. But the thing is, these kids' parents had money. And then also, 
uh, for those of you who are familiar with Birmingham, Alabama, I went to Bodenfield and then there was these kids from Forestdale. A lot of the kids from Forestdale were kind of Cosby-like kids. I had a friend, Derek Bracey, his father drove a Bentley when we were in high school. You, you have all of these mixing of classes, but the thing is it still is different because you go to school for a set amount of hours, but what happens to you at home is more important than what happens to you at school because you're around your parents all the time. You're around your parents during the summer. So how they live and what they dictate and the inheritance that they give you in terms of intellectual ca capital, actual phys phys you know, cash capital is, is hard to get around. Part of competition is you can't be protected. When I was in business environments, I walked into a sales meeting and they were like, Jim's an owner. It was an extremely racist environment. Let me go ahead and say this again. It was an extremely racist environment. However, no one ever talked down to me except the clerk, and we'll get to her later. And no one ever called me outside my name to my face. They just felt a certain way. Went back to my office and I was big mad. I was like, man, these people. Then I formulated an exit plan, but I did not just leave. I didn't like, you know what? Ah, it's so hard to be here. Even with the racism, it was still the best job I ever had until I got into self-employing myself. I had an own office, I had an assistant, and I really sat down and I made a decision because see, I did something stupid before. When I was working at Scottish Rite, many of us in the lab were disgruntled and people were like, yeah, I hate them. Lil's doing this, 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 this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they ain't treating us right. So I put in my two weeks notice and went over to the north side and I was like, yeah, I'm leaving, man. When are you leaving? Oh, I ain't leaving. But you were upset. You were disgruntled. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it ain't that bad. Well, good luck at north side. And then I was in this environment that I got all jazzed up and rah, rah, rah. I took action and no one else did. I learned a very valuable lesson there. And that was the lesson that kept me at business environments because I was sitting there like, oh, I can leave. And I was like, where are you going? What are you going to do? Calm down, take a deep breath and come up with a plan. And I came up with a plan. And that's the last job I ever had in my life. Power does not come from protection. And the whole thing of this movement, like I lived in Japan for six months to thanks to the United States Army. No one was ever rude to me. Now, because I was 6'1 and everyone came up to my armpits or below my armpits, people stared. They were like, look. And I would just go up and talk to people and then once they got to know you, they were pretty cool. I never had any of these, I'm in Japan, people are being hostile, they don't like black people, experiences and moments. Because back then, America had a lot of cachet. America was like, if you were American, you were something. And they didn't see me as a black person when I went to Japan, or I went to London, or I went to Australia, or I went to Brazil. They saw me as an American. And I got treated like that. I'm seeing this discourse where people are moving away from the things they need to do to get power. You're not going to get power in the vacuum. No one's going to give you power. No one's going to pat you on your back and give you a power visa card. It's just not going to happen. And when I was at business environments, I knew what was going on and I worked very hard to be good. I worked very hard. And then yeah, there was some ramifications about some of the deals that I did after I had left. But it was kind of like, you know, when you leave that chick and all of a sudden, you know, you were putting her to sleep. Now your penis is small. It was kind of like that. So now I'm in a position of power, yet I don't understand it. I don't recognize that I'm in the position of power. I'm just doing my thing. And it didn't hit me until that clerk called me and sent me her resume. At that moment, I was, I was in my office and I was like, whoa, what is this happening? Wait a minute. She's racist, but she wants to work for me? That made no sense to me. Like, I grew up in Alabama with the authentically mean white people. See, today we have nice white people. They are, they don't, they're not built for conflict. They're not built for fighting. They don't know it. That side of them is gone for the most part. And you have fringes of these, um, Alabama, we used to have this saying, you know, LA, lower Alabama, that's where the white people that scared white people live. This whole thing of a race war and all this is, ain't gonna happen. People are not geared to fight anymore like that. They just can't do it. They're just like, oh, no, no, hey, man, take my wallet. They're not fighters. Most of them aren't. 
So it's really funny when people talk about the hostility of white people when all they're going to do is think some way and uh, say something. And to me, that is a benign white person. They have no more power than you do. And this is what I learned. Yes, she was white. Yes, she was racist, but she needed a job. And my black ass had a job. And that's when I learned what true power was. It isn't how you walk. It isn't what you say. It isn't what you think. It is how the world reacts to you when you walk in the room and people like, whoa, that's power. It's not a perception. It's not a, a meme. It's reality. And that's the point I understood what power was, which was a good lesson for me getting into the storage auction business, because now we get into lesson number two. I'm out on the storage auction trail with Bobby. And since I had been through rent a crate and panel systems and business environments, I knew how to put together a business. And one of the things about businesses, and this is something they did at business environments, uh, there was a deal that we knew we couldn't get, but we submitted bids and um, our proposals to crank down their price. We lowballed it as low as we could to mess up their pricing system. That is competition. That's what people do when they fighting because we weren't going to get the deal, but we're going to make them have less money. Very important principle that I learned because, you know, in the black community, there's this thing like kumbaya. We're going to all get along. Everybody's going to share. You know, I got a piece of corn. Snap. Here's some corn for you. All right. That's all well and good once you've attained power and you've built a community and an environment to support that. That's nice. But until you get that, you need to be out here in the jungle killing dragons. So I'm out here at the storage auction trail and I remember that lesson. I'm like, okay. So sometimes I would spend all the money in my pocket to make sure that they knew I was there. I was like, I didn't win the day, but I, took, I, I made them spend money. And I kept doing it and I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And this is a lesson that I learned at business environments. And then one day Bobby came over to me and said, look, man, you'll bid against me. I won't bid against you. He came to me. I did not go to him. Bobby was racist as the day is long. I knew he was racist. I knew what he was as soon as I saw him. There ain't no mistake about it. But what forced this racist redneck from the hills of Georgia to come and submit to me? Because I had economic power power because he knew it's like he, he he's fearless he gonna light me up i may get the unit but he's going to take all the meat off the bone i'm just gonna have bone and barely make any money after you do that six seven eight nine ten times they get tired of that like a quarterback who gets hit and is you know gets sacked six times you notice how the accuracies all of a sudden they start becoming inaccurate <laughs> It's the same principle. So because of these lessons I learned in the seat of power, being really competitive out here in the raw marketplace, I was able to bring those lessons to this esoteric business of storage auctions and make people submit. So for the rest of the time I was out there, he never bid against me. Sam Yang, so U-Haul, he used to come there and uh, Dale Lely was like, man, you don't want that bid against him. Because I understood the concept of power. Football game, the flip the field thing, all right? You get them to the five-yard line, it's easier for you to get a field goal or to get a touchdown because you don't have to go that far because you made them spend field position. You made them spend money. That's why when I hear all of this stuff about community and protecting kids, I'm like, that is not where real power is forged. It's not. That's how you develop power. You take it, you seize it, or people lose it. Power is never given to you. I don't care who you are. Going back to the civil rights movement when they were sticking dogs on children, when they were bombing churches and killing four little girls, that changed the whole face of the civil rights movement. Because when those pictures went around the world and people saw that these evil white people were killing children they were like we we can't go for that and also another history lesson the airport that's here at hartsville it was supposed to be in birmingham but because of all that racism that was there there's like nah we ain't putting it there you know how many trillions of dollars the birmingham metro area lost because of their racism this is why i keep saying there's no profit in racism many people want to stick to their guns and you know, do that, but it, it just doesn't work. That's how you develop economic power. 
And another example, Johns Creek area, um, Asians moved up there, sent their kids to school, elevated the school. It's one of the best schools in the area. And white people couldn't compete, so they started moving. Google it. Johns Creek Asian kids, they started moving because they couldn't compete. And this is why I, I see people like who's afraid of the, the mythical white person. Most white people have no more power than you do. And many of them are starting to realize that, hey, we've been tricked. Yeah, we're white, but we're not better. We're not special. We're seeing all of these rappers, and I, look, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, who are creating stuff, who are becoming producers, who are exporting their artistry and making millions. Someone left a comment about disagreeing with me in the strip club. First of all, even if you're a longtime fan, I will run up on you on that. Anybody who wants their daughter on the pole raise their hand. Anyone wants their son suckered and played by a tripper, please raise their hand. I don't care what business deals are done in the strip club. I don't care what hood narratives go on in the strip club. Most of these girls here on YouTube who used to be in the strip, strip club who were giving strip club tutorials, once they got enough money, they came out the strip club. The strip club is a negative environment. There ain't nothing good that comes from it. And I'm gonna give you a parallel. One of my most successful videos, how to start a business with no money. This is once again, a big mistake. If I could do it all over again, I never would have made that video. Why? Because it attracted the wrong people. Here's a video, how to make a uh, stir business with no money. Who do you think it's gonna attract? It's gonna attract people with no money. If you're a capitalist and you're a business and you wanna sell something, how do you sell something to people with no money? Now, here's the strip club. The strip club draws the mob, syndicate, crime, sex trafficking, prostitution. There ain't nothing in my mind that's positive about a strip club. And I haven't been in 10 years. It's just, to me, a poor allocation of money. And I don't care how you're gonna try to justify it. Uh, you know, well, this is what they were doing. Uh, th this was a deal between the st strip club. Do this. I want you to name 100 rappers right now. Why am I doing that? To show you how few of the people are playing that kind of game and why it's stupid. You have a better chance of making money starting a donut shop than you do doing some deals in a strip club with rappers and hip hop in that culture. We gotta get away from these hood narratives. It means seriously. Part of getting power is knowing what power looks like, knowing what power tastes like, and actually feeling power. And if you've got some little black kids, you need to get them in the arena where they start competing at the elementary school level. This whole notion, how people went through the historically black colleges, those processes don't exist anymore. When you went to a Morehouse, you went to a Spelman, they gave you the indoctrination, they gave you the toughness, because they saw people dying. They saw men strung up and they weren't like, okay, we're gonna be, no, they was like, look, if you don't excel, if you don't be about your business, this can happen to you. This is what you need to do. This is how you stand up for your rights. Th those schools are totally different now. And that's the problem that I have. People are living on the myth of the civil rights movement without knowing the history, like A.G. Gaston giving Dr. King money, A.G. Gaston bailing Dr. King out. You have no movements without money. The Tea Party movement was not funded by members of the Tea Party movement. Black Lives Matter was not funded by Black Lives Matter members. These were outside forces that created a political tool to do what they're bidding. The civil rights movement, people who were in the civil rights, funded their own economic empowerment. They were spending their dollars to get where they wanted to go. And that is a fundamental difference because that's why they were so powerful. If you want power in your life, you gotta earn it or you will lose it. Cause people who don't know how, what power looks like, they may, someone may bless them. Like, you know, the king, like here son, now you have the kingdom and the son is a fool. And next thing you know, some warring king who knows what power is comes in. He kills this prince or now king, takes his wife and consolidates the kingdom into his kingdom. Now he has a bigger kingdom. Once again, power is earned, it is developed, and it is taken. It is never given. And we should get out of this notion of trying to protect children from the real world. I don't care how much protection you probably like. If you like Donald Trump's father with hundreds of millions on lock, 
yeah, it can work out. But if you're just a regular person and you're not teaching your kid how to deal out here in these mean economic streets, you're doing them a disservice. And part of that is you have to deny them stuff. I remember this girl, her father was a doctor. Back in the day, Greenbar Mall on the weekends was like a parade. It was so nice. You could just go to the mall, walk around, go to the riches, buy some, meet someone, have a date that night, be in a relationship by next weekend. Totally different world. And I met this girl and we never dated. We just became friends. Um, she was just graduated from Benjamin e. Mays and she was going to Spelman and this was her summer. And her daughter and her father bought her a 500 SEL Mercedes. That sucker, I mean, it was blowing my mind. We just hung out. Nice girl, very sweet, very pretty. And last time I checked on her, she was doing really well. That was the environment that Killer Mike is talking about that does not exist anymore. If it existed, I wouldn't have never made this video. I would never have talked about it. But I just wanted to illustrate to you my walk of life because I know these people. I know everything he was talking about. I saw these people. And also, there was a lot of rivalry. Doug against this, um, Benjamin e. Mays. Um, <laughs> they ain't like each other. They said, oh, you went to Doug. I mean, seriously, I used to hear my ex-wife talk about this and meet people like, oh, they went. To there was so much, not nepotism, but classism. There was, the classism in Atlanta back then was crazy. Like the Ada Omega Qs who had the Q house over by Greenbrier, they didn't mess with the undergrad chapter. It was wild. It was just a crazy, crazy time. But if you want power, first thing you need to do is decide to get power. Going back to business environments and I was like, why are we putting in these bids to on a job we can't get? And they were like, dude. So they used their money not make as much money so in the next fight they won't have as much food bullets ammo whatever to fight you know once you think about it it's like ah oh, okay and i took that same principle because i learned what real power ain't what you think it is power is dirty it's evil it's it's um it's the killer instinct when you have your opponent on the mat you like, oh, okay, we're, you know, it's none of this stuff you see in these Asian movies where like, oh, okay, I won't kill you. No, no, they, they will take you out. That's what real power does. Real power will take you out. And you have to see it because once you see it and once you feel it and then see the results, then you begin to understand. And this is why I have this philosophy. And this is why I have this mindset. And this is why I really push back on a lot of pro-black stuff because it isn't that they're wrong in my opinion, how they're going about doing it is completely stupid. Begging people who don't like you for money, asking people who don't like you to submit and be nice to you, that, don't, that, that just don't work, just doesn't work. That's your lesson in power today. If, if you want it, you can have it, but there's a cost. You're just gonna have to be rough, rugged, and determined. Because like I learned that when you get power, real power, not the pseudo power, not um, positional leadership, but when you get real power, people will respect you. All right. So I will see you guys in the next video below. Remember, this is the last day that you can get your basic financial education for 125. It goes up to 250 and anything that you spend with that going forward on another course, because it will contain those things you will get a coupon off of what you spent. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Please come in and make yourself at home. Do be careful not to step on the rat trap.